My name is Chana Amar Sekera. I am an assistant professor of urology at Northwestern Medicine um, and the director of the Gay and Bisexual Men's Urology Program. I think side effects of prostate cancer treatment, uh, it's one of the biggest components of, of treating prostate cancer. Despite the advances, there are still side effects associated with treatment, and that's important to counsel patients um, prior to their making a decision. The way that gay and bisexual men experience these side effects may be different than um, how heterosexual men experience them, and that's what our studies have found. For example, if you have a gay and bisexual man um, who engages in receptive anal intercourse, um, the impact of removing the prostate or of radiating that field uh, and potentially causing rectal fibrosis, uh, it could be devastating to that person. The way we've thought about the sexual side effects of treatment, uh, uh, it's generally been you know, focused on erectile function, which is important you know, to almost all heterosexual men. Uh, and then it's important to, to, to gain bisexual men too, but th that might not be the whole picture. They might also care about rectal function, um, how the, the prostate is affected after treatment. And as it stands, we don't counsel these patients on this particular aspect of it or how um, things other than erectile function might change when it comes to sexual function. And when that happens, you set up uh, a, a scenario where that, there might be some resentment if uh, things happen after treatment that you didn't necessarily counsel them about. In terms of side effects that gay and bisexual men experience uh, from treatment, um, they're very similar to the side effects experienced by heterosexual men. It's the level of bother experienced uh, that's often different in the studies. So there are several studies uh, that show that gay men have greater bother with erectile dysfunction. And part of this could just be cultural. Uh, if you look at uh, population data, there's a higher prevalence of non-monogamous, non-traditional relationships in these um, couples compared to their heterosexual uh, counterparts. A lot of these men may feel like they have many more years of, uh, of an active sex life ahead of them and then suddenly they get hit with this prostate cancer diagnosis and they lose erectile function and uh, sexual ability. And that is a big change from what they were expecting, and so they, it can lead to a lot of disappointment. We've found that uh, some emission of urine during cl uh, climax is more bothersome to gay men um, as opposed to straight men. So there are just differences in how uh, the side effects are perceived. One of the biggest implications of our work is that there's a lot that's not known. For example, it's unclear at this point, there's no data on when these men can resume sexual activities like receptive anal, anal intercourse. The prostate is right there and the anastomosis during a surgery uh, is right in that area. There could be some radiation fibrosis uh, in that area, so it's not clear exactly when to tell, tell these men to resume uh, activity. Another important example of how this plays out is if you have brachytherapy with gay men, um, if you have these seeds in the prostate and they have receptive anal intercourse, um, they shouldn't be doing this for you know, two months to six months because of the fear of radiating the, the penis of the inserted partner. This doesn't play as big a role with straight men, but it's just something that you have to counsel gay men about, and I don't think there's a lot of uh, awareness of this.